strange looking molds and areas where she would have had a bathing suit or whatever, it's because of the tanning uh, salons. So we think that these tanning beds are developing an epidemic of UV-induced tumors in tanning bed users over the next two decades, mostly teenage women and young women and men. <clears throat> so it is creating, we are seeing a lot of abnormal moles in the younger population. I'm seeing melanomas. We're, we're almost seeing one a week. There's months where we see a, a, a big, the, the good thing is we're catching them early, earlier, because now we have a lot of little instruments to magnify it on the skin, and we're able, able to detect them early and get rid of them and, and, and prevent further damage. So <clears throat> most avoidable enemy to skin aging. Uh, next. So let's talk a little bit about sunscreens. There's chemical sunscreens and physical sunscreens, so it's two types of sunscreens. The chemical absorbs the UV radiation, the physical reflects the UV radiation. The physical is like the white zinc oxide paste. What's happened is that there's a lot of new ingredients, and the, the zinc oxide people, of course, it's not attractive. It's like using the, 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 the uh, things we use for babies, this thick white paste. So they, now they've micronized it, and they put a little bit of the zinc oxide on some of the sunscreens to make them a little bit more elegant so that people are able to use it. But this is all the list of the FDA ingredients. Uh, and is anything new? Let me show you what's new regarding uh, sunscreens. There's a couple of new uh, molecules in the market. One of them is called Mexoril. The other one's called Helioplex. What these new molecules that the FDA finally approved is because these have UVA co coverage. Now that you understand why, it's important to protect against UVA. So when you look for sunscreens nowadays, you're just not going to look at the SPF factor. You're also going to look at that they have UVA coverage. And this is what we call total sunscreen protection. So pay attention to these compounds. Helioplex is in a lot of the J&J &J products, Neutrogena, Avena, all of them have it. And then the Mexoril is more in the L'Oreal products. So, you know, they're uh, little antagonistic companies. They both came out with some new compounds. And basically, they're very, very good UVA uh, sun protections, which we didn't have in the past. And basically what's happening is, like, we had a lot of the UVA-B coverage, and we weren't covering that. Some of the older molecules covered this part of, of the wavelength, and now the newer sunscreen covered the short part of the UVA, which we thought was being missed by a lot of the sunscreens that were in the market. So these are from the American Academy of Dermatology recommendations that we should all follow. Standard advice still applies. Sun avoidance when possible. 10 to 4, 10 to 3 is the time where the sun is closest to the earth. So that's when the sun is stronger. Those are the hours where you have to make sure you use your sunscreen. If you're boating, if you're tennis, if you're golfing, whatever it is that you're doing, please make sure you're protected during that time. Sunscreen should be used daily, especially if you live in, in, in places like Florida, Australia, where we're in the sun belt. You have to have to use your sunscreens every day. Apply it 15 to 30 minutes. Reapply. This is another important one. 90 minutes. Normally, people put them on and go outside. You have to allow the, the, the uh, sunscreen to be absorbed. So it's important to apply it a little bit early and to reapply it because it's metabolized or you swim and it's not, if it's not a waterproof one, it'll be metabolized, it will be gone. So remember, every two hours, reapply your sunscreen. Sunscreen should not be used to incre increase the time spent in intense sunlight. I think that's, uh, we don't have to make any comments, and should provide significant UVA coverage. I think that was the new topic that we touched on today. So, skin care, truth or myth? Uh, let's, this, now we're going to switch a little bit and we're going to talk about some skin care. There's different categories where you're going to find uh, skin care products. And the places where you're going to find products, you have ethical pharmaceutical companies, you have upscale department stores where they carry what we call the prestige brands, prestige cosmetics. You have pharmacies, you have Walmart and Kmart, which is mass market, and you have dermatologists 
skincare lines, and you also have doctor's dispense products. Well, in these different categories, you will find a product in the upscale department stores. If it's a prestige brand, it's going to be a more expensive product. And if you go more to mass market, you're probably going to find 10 20 maximum $30 product. If you go to Nordstrom's, I've seen little vials of, of uh, caviar cream for $500. <laughs> so, so you can see the wide variety and spectrum of what you have there in the market today regarding skin care. There are several molecules that have been studied that really do improve your skin and the quality of your skin. And one of them is the retinoic, the, uh, retinoic acid, which is Retin-A. You've all heard of Retin-A. It came out for acne. And the molecule was studied. It is the only prescribed medication that is, has approval for reversing uh, signs of photo damage, and it also prevents skin cancer. So you can get the retinoids in the forms of retinols as an over-the-counter because the, the compound, tretinoin, is only available through prescription. But retinol is a derivative of retin-A and eventually becomes tretinoin in the cell. So you have to use a lot more of it, but there is some improvement with it. Another compound that has been studied significantly that actually does work is the alpha hydroxy acids. And those you can find in a lot of those compounds, the, uh, the glycolic acid, lactic acid. Those were, came out like in the late 90s, and now there's three, 400 companies that have those ingredients. Those are good uh, also for a little bit of the photo damage part. The other compounds are the vitamin C's, and lately we have a lot of new antioxidants in the market. And you know a lot of the sun damage uh, creates a lot of free radical formation, and the newer products try to um, reverse some of that photo damage. So let's look at what's available out there. In terms of um, ethical pharmaceutical cosmetic companies, you know these, the Johnson & Johnsons, the Procter's & Gamble's, Unilever, uh, L'Oreal. These companies have a significant amount of funding for advertising, but they also have a lot of research behind their products because they have areas where huge, huge facilities when they spend a significant amount of research. So these are products that you will be safe using them. Ethical pharmaceutical cosmetic companies, I call products with the Neutrogena, Avino. These are Johnson & Johnson companies, and they're very good products. They're well-formulated, wide variety for acne, for pigmentation, uh, for anti-aging. And, and Procter and & Gamble with their oil of Olay is also a very good product. They have a winner, 